Not yet. Now we are. Now we're live. <clears throat> now we're live, folks. Starting a couple minutes early here. <laughs> Excuse Nick's face. <laughs> you have to close up. Just waiting for some viewers to start rolling in. See if there are any lucky uh, first people on site here. Get, can we get some likes up in here? Oh, hey Oliver. Oliver. Nice to see Oliver joining Oliver's us. In the house. Oliver is in the house. So we're going to give it a couple more minutes, um, or actually one minute, to get started here. Give some people a chance to get here on time. We were early today. We were anxious. We're yeah, back. we're back. We're back and ready for action. We got our nice little tablecloth this time. We're in a conference conference room, so it's official. Can everyone hear us okay? Thumbs up if you can hear us okay. Some thumbs up in here. All right. All right. So it's seven o'clock, everyone. So why don't we get started? Um, Nick and Let's I are back. Um, had a little hiatus, but that's okay. Um, I am Kirsten. And I'm Nick. And we are here to talk to you about injuries during the recruiting process today. For those of you who are high school athletes or parents of high school athletes, please check out our brand new blog. It's on our front page called Injuries During the Recruiting Process. Uh, it's really informative. We're going to be talking about it a little bit today. Um, and it will be a really great resource for people who are injured or maybe w wondering what can go wrong during that time of the recruiting process. Um, and we are also going to talk about the perspectives from uh, college coaches. So we got some advice from them on what you should do during your recruiting process if you have an injury. Um, Nick, any, any thoughts, anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, this is on hopefully a situation where, you know, you don't have to go through it. You know, no one, no athletes like being injured, especially during a stressful time like the recruiting period. But, you know, it's something that unfortunately happens. It could unfortunately happen to you. Um, so, yeah, we're just here to help you through that, you know, just in case you do find yourself in a fortunate position of having a little bit of an injury during the recruiting process to help you through it, the stressful the already stressful period can be a little bit more stressful with an injury, but hopefully with this video and with some of the blogs up on our site, we can help you get through that process. Also, if you are a current or former collegiate athlete and you have a story about an injury during your recruiting process, please feel free to share. Um, also, any opinions or advice would be great, so just comment on the blog. And if you're a high school athlete, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, we're also in Indianapolis right now, which is pretty exciting. We're at the, uh, um, the II AAA State Conference. Yeah, in Indianapolis at the Marriott. Yep. Lovely it's our, Marriott. It's our great Hotel. room today. Uh, you can't really see the chandelier, but it's a stunner. <laughs> um, all right, so Nick, why don't Let's you get started? All right, yeah, so as Kirsten mentioned, you know, we do have this great blog up where we talk to some athletes that have been through this recruiting process and had to deal with an injury. So. Again, make sure you check that out, read the full blog, but a couple of the uh, really interesting stories that we wanted to highlight from there. We talked to um, a couple of players on the Colgate women's ice hockey team, and we talked to Lauren, who unfortunately got a concussion during her recruiting process, and That's this is fun. kind of, oh no. Yeah. No, I'm never good. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, this is kind of different than other injuries because, um, of, like it's obviously a very serious injury and it also affected her academically because she mentioned it was right around the time of the ACTs and SATs which you know is a big moment for any high school junior or senior whichever year you are taking those so it affected her not only ability to play hockey she um, missed some time unfortunately but she also you know struggled on these tests which 
you know, when you think about it, it's almost as important as your um, athletic abilities, you know, scoring on these tests. But she did say, fortunately, you know, the uh, the school, the admissions office, and the coaches were very understanding. And while she didn't score, you know, quite as high as she would have hoped, um, she was very open and honest about this whole thing. So the school was understanding and worked with her as well as the, uh, the coach understood why maybe her scores were a little below what they would expect. Yeah, and her advice to any high school athletes out there that are injured um, is to have good communication with the coaches and the trainers as well. They're also a really important part of your college uh, experience. Um, and, you know, just make sure that you're letting them know right away you're being honest with them and you're, you know, keeping them updated throughout your whole process of recovery and so on and so forth. Also, she said to keep working hard and believing the dream, which Absolutely. is so true. Absolutely. Such a motivational so thinker. That's so what it's all about. Lauren. Yeah, and so then another um, person we talked to was Kyra on the Yale ice hockey team. And she, again, obviously had the injury during the recruiting process. And the way she looked at it, which I think is a great way to look at it, is, you know, again, she was open. She was honest with the coaches, very upfront. Um, she was very upfront about the injury. And, you know, the coaches worked with her. They were totally understanding. That kind of gave her the reassurance that, like, oh, I made the right choice coming to play for these coaches because rather than um, – you know, either forgetting about her, not recruiting her anymore. The coaches continually reached out to her about rehab to see how she was doing, to see when she could get back on the ice again. And that kind of said, like, oh, I made the right choice. I really want to go play for um, these coaches because they care me, care about me uh, as an individual. Yeah, and then uh, we had a, we have a comment here. Susie Stevens, shout out to Susie really quickly. Uh, she says communication is huge, huge in all caps, which obviously we yeah. can't stress this enough. Um but I will say that there is a difference between communicating about certain types of injuries. If you have a smaller injury, let's say you rolled your ankle or you sprained your wrist, there's really no need to tell your coach about that because you know that you're going to um, get better pretty quickly and it's not really going to affect you. You're not going to miss half your season for a rolled ankle. It'll probably just be you know, a game or two out if even that. Um, so make sure that you are letting them know about the big injuries. So... Um, any sort of ACL tear or if you have to get surgery or anything like that. And most of the time, uh, the coach will be patient and they will respect the fact that you get injured. I mean, everyone gets injured at some point in their lives as an athlete, so they, they know that. Um, at certain levels, it may be a little bit tougher to be uh, getting recruited. So if you're a high Division One athlete and you're getting recruited, maybe if you tell them that you get injured, they may not be interested in in you anymore, and that is really dependent on the coach. Sadly, that's the fact of the matter. Um, but there's always time to rebrand yourself and reclassify yourself if something does happen like that, where you can go to lower tier divisions. Uh, you can also go to lower tiers in that division. Uh, so maybe go for an NCAA school that doesn't win as much or doesn't have a high profile. Also, Division Two, II, Division Three, or taking a, a prep school year is also a good option, which was advice from one of the coaches that we spoke to. Um, if it's a really, really bad injury and it's later in your recruiting process. Um, but back to what one of the coaches was saying, um, we, we got opinions from a couple of different people, and both, both of them said, t uh, tell the coach about the injury and the recovery plan that's in play. So make sure that you're planning what the next step is. You can show the coach that you're proactive. Yes, exactly. Show them that you're proactive. Let them know that, hey, you know, I'm planning on coming back from this injury. It's not a big deal. Um, I mean, definitely let them know, but don't play it up as if it's a bad thing. Let them know that you're willing to work hard and that you're going to grow stronger from this. Um, also, the players have the responsibility to get back to health, healthy, like fully recovered and everything. So it's definitely on you. Um, you're not going to have some a, a coach pushing you 24-7 or a college coach reaching out, how are you doing, what are you doing. It's on you to kind of let them know what's going on and keeping them in the loop and letting them know that you are going to rehab or you are stretching every day or whatever it may be. Um, so those are definitely some really important things to hit on. Um, I think, oh, we have a, uh, we have um, another yeah, comment from Barbie. Nick, from Barbie that one? here. So Barbie um, played volleyball at Boston College, and she shared that during her recruiting process, she tore her ACL, um, reached out to her coach to thank him for the offer, kind of assuming that, you know, it was over and they were going to move on. But he actually told her, um, 
Sorry. And then instead of, you know, moving on, he reached out to her and said, I know you'll come back stronger. I know you'll get over this and stuck, uh, stuck with her throughout the process. And again, you know, Barbie said that made her really impressed. So it's a good way to, you know, if a coach does move on when you get injured, you can kind of think of it as, oh, maybe I didn't, I, uh, that's not the type of coach I would have wanted to play for anyway. So it's a good way to get, you know, character of a coach, you know, if he or she's going to stick with you through the injuries and the tough time, you know, you know that you probably made the right decision. And if they do back out and or they do feel, you know, if you feel like they're a little less committed to you after an injury, you kind of realize, all right, maybe it's for the best that I don't go. Maybe it just wasn't meant to be. Players. Right, exactly. Which is no big deal. Things happen. But also, if that does happen, keep in mind that you can always look at the Division two or Division three right. option. Um, or, again, we have another comment from Matthew who said prep school is definitely a great option for people who get injured either junior or senior year. If you can show you're fully recovered, most coaches won't care. Absolutely true. Um, and we know that Matthew is a football player, so for any football players out there, um, obviously a sport where the injury rate is extremely high, that's definitely a viable option. That could be a viable option for you. Um, and Barbie commented again saying that uh, it was great motivation. She Skyped her coach every single week um, to keep them updated, which, again, call them every right. week. Let them know what you're doing. Um, maybe have them talk to your trainer, whatever it may be, but definitely make the effort to communicate with them, make the effort to let them know what you're doing, to get better, and so on and so forth. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously a very scary thing to be a, a high school athlete and then have some sort of injury that, you think may affect your recruiting capabilities yeah. because I mean, then you're just kind of sitting there like, oh no, what now? There's you could be in the situation go. with uh, Barbie. You know, she thought it was basically over and her coach stuck to his word, which will happen a lot of the times. Um, and obviously he is, cares about his players. Um, but I mean, it's a scary thing to go through. Yeah, I mean, as an athlete, you never want to be hurt, especially, like I said, during this period where all you focus is, you know, getting in front of these coaches and impressing them. And whether you can try to play through it and it kind of affects your play, you know, that could be stressful. Or if it's just a serious enough injury where you're completely out, you know, it is a scary thing because there's nothing you can do. You know, you just got to, again, be open, communicate with the coaches, with the trainer at your high school, or if you're already committed to a school, um, the trainers at those colleges to make sure that you get back 100% ready to play and ready to uh, show off to the coach why he or she did recruit you in the first place. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then we have Alex who, Alexander who just commented and said, if you think you'll need it, how would you recommend bringing up needing to take a redshirt year with a coach? Um, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, redshirting is really big for D1 and D2. I don't think it's really huge for D3. Yeah, if there's you'll see medical redshirts in um, yeah. Division I know one of my teammates at Skidmore had to take a medical red shirt, and that's just something that it's a conversation you need to have with the coach. Do you want to explain what a medical red shirt is? Oh, right, yeah. So a regular red shirt is if you, um, you can't, if you don't think that you're going to play a lot for a certain season. It happens a lot, like Pearson said, in like big time Division One football. Um, you sit out the year and you don't practice, you don't play. Or a medical red shirt is when you sit out because of an injury. So it can be your any year. It doesn't have to be your first year at the school. If you can't play, I think I want to say it's seven. If you miss seventy five percent of the games or something, you can medical red shirt. And that's just something that you need to talk to the coach about, um, talk to the trainers about, and see if it's something you want to do in the first place because it does give you another year of eligibility that you can pack on to the end if that's something you want and you'd rather play for however many full a season fully healthy, you know, it sucks. You know, you don't want to sit out and watch your team play, but if that's something that could benefit your team and your career in the long run, it's definitely a conversation that you have. Yeah, and I think as far as bringing it up to the coach, I think if you're really serious about go doing a medical redshirt year, then presenting the option to the coach and kind of letting them be in the decision-making process with you instead of saying, I want a medical redshirt. Right. Say, hey, I'm thinking that I'm not going to be fully recovered by this date. How do you feel about me medical redshirting? Um, and, and kind of including them in the conversation instead of just you making that decision on your own. Um, 
Because, like Nick said, any decision that you're going to be making as far as medical redshirt and regular redshirt and playing, not playing, affects yourself, but it also affects your team right. and the coaching staff and scholarships and whatever else it may be. So there's a lot of different factors. Maybe they won't want you to, maybe they will, and they, or maybe they want you to do a post-grad year or whatever it may be. Um, but that's definitely a really great question, Alexandra, so thank you for that. Great. Tossing her a like on the comment because it was a good question. Good stuff. Um, again, if anyone else has any comments or questions throughout the time, please, please, please comment. Um, also, we have the blog, Injuries in the Recruiting Process, up that is on our front page. So if you go onto our website right now, it'll be right there. Um, and that way you can kind of see some other stories that happen throughout the recruiting process. Um, but I think overall the theme of this video is communication. Um, communication and also taking the initiative to work hard and realize that you're going to need to put pressure on yourself to get better. Um, again, nobody's going to be there telling you, hey, you need to do this, hey, you need to do that. Maybe your parents will, but a college coach isn't going to be doing that. They're going to leave it up to you. And that's also going to uh, be a variable. And if they continue the scholarship with you or not, I'm assuming with Barbie, since she was Skyping her coach every single week and letting him know what she was doing and, you know, really keeping him in the loop, it made him feel more comfortable to continue um, with her being on the team. And, um, and yeah, I think that's... Yeah, it's like you were saying, like, to kind of go off that point, it's one way to see how a coach is going to react. You know, if he or she sticks with you, like I said, that would be, you know, maybe some reassurance that you made the right decision. It's also a good chance for the coach to learn a lot about you as an athlete. Mm -hmm. You know, like Kirsten said, you're not at the school at the time. You're obviously still going through the recruiting process, so they want to see, like, oh, he or she is fully committed to getting back. You know, re going through physical therapy and all that stuff, you know, it's some of the worst things for an athlete. No one likes doing it, but it kind of shows your character. Even when things are going bad, you can kind of make the best out of the situation, work to overcome it. And so it could, it's a good opportunity for you to show a lot to, uh, about yourself to college coaches. Yeah, I also have a fun story. Um, I actually injured myself in the recruiting process, well, kind of the summer before I went to college, and I didn't even know I injured myself. Um, I was kind of being ne negligent with it. I knew that I hurt my shoulder. I actually fell down the Eiffel Tower stairs and grabbed the railing, and my entire body weight like ripped my shoulder, oh. tore my rotator cuff. Yeah, tore my rotator cuff. But I didn't find out until like last year. So this is like five years after the fact because <laughs> I just decided to ice it every single game, and I didn't want to know that I was injured. Uh, yes, yeah. I basically just pretended it wasn't there, which was not smart, and I do not recommend that. If you can get an MRI and figure out the injury sooner rather than later, it's probably for the best. Um, if I could go back, I wish that I would have like sued the Eiffel Tower for a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wish that I, uh, you know, kind of took care of it a lot sooner than what I did because it did affect my serve and a couple other parts of my game. But it is what it yeah, is. But. You know, again, going back, like Kirsten said, the theme of this is openness and communication. If you don't tell a coach about an injury that you have and you try to play through it and a little nagging injury, he or she can watch you play and if it affects your play, in the coach's mind, you're there, you are 100% healthy and not playing as well as you would like, you know. If you don't tell the coach that you're injured or that X, Y, and Z happen, like, X, Y, and Z happens, why maybe you didn't play great a game that they saw you come, they went to see you play or anything like that. They won't know that you're hurt, so they will just, you know, maybe think less of you as a as a recruit. But if you're honest with them, open about it, they'll keep that in the back of their mind. Yeah, we're getting some likes in here, so I was just looking to yep. see all the likes flowing Thanks in. Thanks so. for the shout out, Josh. Yeah. Josh is a yeah. Great oh, intern Josh for is gonna us. get a like. Yeah, yep. There we yep. go. There we go. Two likes. One like. Um. All right. Again, if there are any questions or comments, let us know. Um. But we've talked about both the coach's advice as well as the athlete advice, but I'll, again, I'll just touch on the coach advice really quickly. Um, again, but player's responsibility to get back to um, being healthy. The coaches should be patient and understanding. That was a coach's advice to other coaches. Um, 
If the injury is really late in the process, you may want to look at a lower tier in that division or look at D2 or D3 schools. Um, and if you don't want to do that, then prep school is always, always an option. If prep school isn't big in your area of the country because it's they're really big in the Northeast and out West, um, maybe looking at junior college or going to an NAIA for a year and communicating that with your coach. Um, again, that's going to have to be a team decision. And by team, I mean with your parents, your coach, and yourself. Um, and tell the coach about the injury and the recovery plan. So that, from a college coach perspective, those are those are the steps that you should be taking, and those are the options that you have. Um, we've talked about what the uh, athletes say. Actually, we should talk about the the Yale football player really quickly. Um, the one who knew he could ball. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah. It's on our blog. Sure. Um, we had we talked yeah. to. Uh, Robert Clemens, Yale University football player, and he was confident in himself, you know, that we asked him during the recruiting process what was it like being injured, and his quote was, I was a little nervous, but overall I knew I could ball. So, you know, he was confident in his abilities, he knew that the injury wasn't going to define him, he was going to overcome it, and that, you know, once he was healthy, he knew he'd be able to showcase his talents for these coaches, you know, he wouldn't let it affect him, and it obviously worked out for him, he ended up going to Yale. Yeah. Play some football, play some ball. Yeah. When, when you know ball is life. Then <laughs> there and you another, go. I know um, I was fortunate enough to not have an injury during the recruiting process, but a few of my teammates at Skidmore in my year did have arm surgeries leading up to um, their freshman year at, at Skidmore, and a couple of them were telling me that they had a, some D1 offers before they got injured. Um, but afterwards, you know, those kind of went away, and so they had to go the Division three route, which, you know, like Kirsten said, is a very viable option if that's something that you want to do. You know, they were able to come to Division three school and contribute right away. They um, were, you know, some of the – if you get offers for Division one, you end up playing Division three. you know, you'll, you'll have a good chance to stand out on the field or on the ice, whatever that is. And so uh, – We have another friend, Nick. Who got injured during the recruiting process? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. so yeah, the people we were talking about was my friend Nick Barrett yeah. and his brother actually both got um, the surgeries during the recruiting process, and so then they uh, they ended up coming D three, and I think they made the right decision. If you ask them, it was obviously was a, not the best of situations, but they were able to make the most of it. They were honest with our coach, and they uh, we had kept back one hundred percent, and you know, had great careers. Yeah, definitely. Um, again, any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, please feel free to comment. Um, we got a couple more minutes on here. Um, but did you ever get injured during the recruiting process? No, yeah. So, you know, as a pitcher, I was a pitcher on the baseball team. The most I miss, you know, a month here and there with inflammation, but I never had to have any surgery or anything. So I was lucky, you know, I didn't have to deal with any of this. But... If you do, you were one of the lucky ones. yeah, seriously, yeah. Not many people nowadays can say that. So yeah, but I totally agree. If you do get injured and you are being recruited by D one schools, it is a chance to then yeah. say maybe it's not right for me. Maybe I could be a stud on the yeah, D three. Yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. And or, like I said before, you know, the coaches pull their offer after you get hurt. It's like you know, all right, maybe I didn't want to play for him or her in the first place. So, you know, if that's something. Totally true, totally true. Um, so, again, make sure that you check out the blog on our website called Injuries During the Recruiting Process. Um, it's informative. It what We talked about some of the stories today right here. Um, a lot more great through. stories on there, you know, if you're going through it. Yep. These are all athletes who went on to play. Got a lot of Division One athletes up there, so some big-time college athletics, and they were able to overcome it. So if you need some... You know, encouragement, some motivation, you know, check that out right there. Yeah, and then um, also just a special shout out to uh, a couple of our interns, Kayla, Krista, and Susie, um, and Megan. Yeah. They all did a really great job in getting this information from all these athletes for you guys to have. Um, they've been working really hard on it, even though they've been on spring break, which is very nice of them. Um, so special thanks to that crew right there. Um, and to all of our other interns, because we love you guys. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to comment on this video after it's over. Um, we, we will, will 
responds in a timely manner. Uh, and besides that, we're going to go enjoy Indianapolis. Oh, Long and don't forget. Rate, rate your coach. Rate your coach at LockerRoomTalk.com. That's the most important thing. Yeah. That's if you take thing. anything out of this. Yeah. Rate your coach. <laughs> and we'll see you soon. Yes, we will be back. Yeah. We All need right. like a catchphrase. Like a yeah. Closing. We'll work on that next time. Bye, everyone.